Hello and welcome to another edition of the Auto Focus Show. This is the new Baleno. It looks sharper, it looks a little more well designed, it has a better road presence. The car has had a very distinctive design. One of the models that's been extremely popular from the Nexa portfolio of Maruti. This car is now got a facelift, which is a significant upgrade to the Baleno of before. It's not just a cosmetic facelift. There's much more that's gone on under the skin. There's a lot of new tech, a lot of new features. Some of the new design features, especially at the front, intended to deliver a slightly more modern profile for the Baleno. It's not like the design has aged. It still is quite fresh. And it's one of the better looking cars from Maruti's Nexa portfolio clean surfacing, but all of that has changed. Though it's very familiar, all the body panels have pretty much been redone. The company's R&D officials say that the entire door panels, the front, the fenders, the lamps, the electricals, all of it has changed. In the front, big changes. As you can see, the LED lights, the DRL signature, and they have this triple um, array of lights and LEDs in the front that kind of gives it a more modern profile a uh, clear glass configuration for the headlamps. The grille again is modified. The smiling signature for the, the chrome band that was there in the previous Berliner 2 and sort of gave it its front design signature that stays, but of course in a slightly different orientation. LED fog lamps too in the front. So of course it is going to be different based on what trim level you choose, but this is pretty much what you will get if you choose the uh, top trim variant and much of the equipment that you see here will be standard in the top end variant. So this is the refreshed and upgraded cabin of the 2022 Baleno. The cabin already had a relatively premium feel. For a car in this segment, the Baleno's cabin, even the previous model, looked pretty fresh, clean, well-made, and there really wasn't too many complaints, but this one has been upgraded. It certainly feels a little more well-designed. The dashboard layout is simple and at the same time very appealing. And the dark gray and black and light tinge of blue color theme that runs through the cabin has really given this cabin a lot more life. Three features inside the cabin that stand out for me really are the head-up display, which is genuinely a safety feature in addition to being a convenience feature. Some of you might find it a little distracting if you're not used to using head-up display and sort of looking right through it at the information and not being distracted by the construction of the head-up display itself. But you would find as you get used to the head-up display that it's a good safety feature where you don't have to take your eyes off the road and look at information on the infotainment screen. And especially in crowded conditions, you might find that a far more useful feature. The other thing that has changed, of course, is this nine inch infotainment screen, which gets a lot more functionality, which gets added features, and it gets RKMS sound system, which also has surround sound capability in terms of its output and in terms of its performance. It has been amped up and it genuinely feels good to listen to. The automatic climate control system is the other bit that you will find continues to be useful. And at the same time, it's good to see it's not a touch screen. It still has physical controls. And for me, that is a big plus. I genuinely feel touch screen automatic climate control systems can be a little difficult to and fiddly to deal with when you're driving uh, in you know crowded or in fast driving conditions the steering wheel of course gets a flat bottom finish with again the multiple um, function controls right at the spokes easy to reach and use while you're on the go and a lot of convenience especially if you are going to be 
hitting the highway or the expressway and you're going to be on cruise control a lot of this is now focused on giving customers a more premium a more convenient usable car in the cabin the only thing that i found a little uh, not to my liking was the seat squabs themselves which are a little too soft to my liking i would have liked them a little firmer even the rear seat the squabs are soft but if you are going to be mostly commuting to your workplace or to a neighborhood home then you're going to find that these seat squabs are comfortable in the 2 3 hours that i experienced the car this morning certainly there are no complaints in terms of it being uncomfortable but i just wonder whether they might be a little more comfortable if they were firmer especially for longer rides that said the seat construction itself is very nice and the side bolsters have been increased in size it they feel really good and they seem to hold you as i was leaning into some of the turns and trying to take them a little fast this a lot of sporty feel that you get from these seats themselves let's look at what has happened at the rear um again that chrome garnish that you saw before um in the previous bolino is still there um but of course this time around it gets a rear view camera that camera there in the chrome garnish that camera is now being used along with dome mounted cameras to create a 360 degree view when you're going to be trying to park the new bolino and that i can tell you already after experiencing it a little is extremely useful i agree that this is not a very big car and the footprint is pretty compact but at the same time a little more convenience in our crowded parking spots who doesn't like that so anyway the design wise the rear of the new bolino gets this split tail lamps a new led configuration inside it again delivering a new nighttime signature from the rear uh, a tighter fender and a tailgate which looks again like the previous bolino but there has been changes there too the engine is one of the most refined engines from maruti and in fact even in this size class it is pretty good it quite literally purrs from inside the bonnet the engine offers uh, quite a bit of mid and high rev range uh, performance so e keeping it uh, mildly on the boil will return um, very good feedback from the engine and it quite is an enjoyable petrol engine quite peppy and easy to stay in gear while you see the speed of rise up into three digits gear shifts are short and smooth and quick in the manual gearbox and it is quite easy to keep the baleno up on the run the ags offers a sort of dual character first to ensure that the baleno's premium positioning can be reflected in the gear stick too they have kept it shorter and has a nice gear knob so which is definitely a plus it It still isn't quite as refined as the CVT, but this is certainly improvement over the AGSs that we have seen from Maruti in the past in cars like the Celerio. Um, the new Bellino's AGS is definitely a much improved version. There is still a bit of shift shocks, and that is when you are really in a sort of a hurry and you are stomping at the throttle pedal and. Uh, Uh, at other times it is quite smooth it is uh, shift quality is pretty unobtrusive and a uh, pretty quiet easy going ags the 2022 baleno is the first maruti small car to get six airbags the mid and uh, top zeta and alpha variants get six airbags um all variants get abs with ebd brake assist and isofix anchorages and even two front airbags for the base variant these are standard across all the base sigma variant is a little stripped down but the other variants get varying degrees of equipment overall the new baleno is a much improved package even the mileage numbers are pretty impressive at 22.35 km per liter for the manual and 22.94 km per liter for the AGS of course these are ARA rated mileage numbers real world numbers will definitely be lower 
the AGS auto gearbox is not quite like the CVT even though the latter still had its rubber band effect as a equally niggling issue but if you want to go clutch free obviously the AG AGS will have to be it prices for the new Bellino range from 6.35 lakhs to about 9.49 lakhs